Hello, I'm Tierra Cato. And I'm Brandon Jackson. Welcome to this week's edition of IU News. We have a great show for you today with a movie review, a tasty cooking segment, and a special interview with LBCC's dance instructor, Professor Stephanie Powell. All this and more, so stay tuned for an action-packed episode of IU News. Welcome back. Now for our first story, let's head over to the studio where Roxanne Arias gives us the lowdown of the sci-fi blockbuster Battle of Los Angeles. Hi, and welcome to this week's movie review. Today we will be taking an in-depth look at Battle of Los Angeles. The movie stars Aaron Eckhart, Michelle Rodriguez, Bridget Monaghan, and Ramon Rodriguez in a dynamic action thriller about a global offensive initiated by unknown extraterrestrial hostiles. Although this is a great movie for adults, it's not recommended for kids due to extreme violence and graphic images. After months of alien attacks, Los Angeles is the last city standing and the last hope for all mankind. It's all up to Sergeant Nance, played by Eckhart, and his new troops to defend Los Angeles. The battle commences and it becomes very obvious that Nance troops are outnumbered. After many losses, it seems that all hope is lost. Will the human race prevail? or will the alien forces destroy the Earth? Find out for yourself. This movie is perfect for all those action movie lovers like myself. It takes you on a journey into a depleted and destroyed version of the city of Los Angeles and leaves you wondering what else is out there. Overall, I give this movie three stars out of four. I'm Roxanne Arias, IE News. Thanks, Roxy. Our very own IE News reporter, Ferial Khan, sat down with the Dean of Financial Services EOPS, and Veterans Affair, Mike McCallum. Let's take a look. Hi, and welcome to this week's Spotlight interview. Uh, today we have Dr. Mike McCallum, who wears many hats here at LBCC. He's the Dean of the Financial Aid Department, Veterans Affairs, and EOPS. Now, Dr. McCallum, um, how do you prioritize with every one of your jobs? Well, first of all, I'm very lucky to have several uh, very strong supervisors uh, over some of the areas that I supervise. And uh, they, they pretty much handle the day-to-day uh, -day operations. Uh, but frankly, it does take a certain amount of skill to, uh, to know who is who has some space on their plate uh, to, to de delegate things to. Um, and uh, what items that I need to do myself personally, what items I can delegate, and uh, it's part of the part of the requirements of the position. Mm -hmm. For those of us who don't know, can you tell me what EOPS is and what um, qualifications does a student need to be a part of it? Uh, EOPS stands for Extended. Uh, opportunity programs and services. It was a uh, program that was created in the late 1960s to help educationally disadvantaged students succeed in college. Mm -hmm. uh, to qualify, a student has to apply for financial aid uh, and then based on their financial aid income uh, information, uh, meet an income criteria and then also meet one of five uh, educationally disadvantaged criteria. And those include um, first in their family to go to college, uh, 2.5 or lower GPA in high school, uh, uh, spoke a, another language at home uh, when they were young children, um, be placed into a remedial class at Long Beach City College, or uh, be a member of a dis, uh, of a um, uh, underrepresented group here at Long Beach City College. Uh, what is your role <clears throat> in Veterans Affairs? Well, I generally supervise the area, but I've got a supervisor that that works under me, Frank Menjivar, uh, who's actually a supervi who actually supervises Veterans Affairs, and we also have a, a certifying official who hand handles all the paperwork. Um, a, a veteran, being a veteran myself, I'm a real advocate of veterans, and uh, so I try and and, and uh, lead up that effort and uh, make sure that we're. Um, you know, doing a good job welcoming our veterans to Long Beach City College. What kind of challenges do you see for veterans getting back into everyday life? Well, you know, um, 
The, the one thing is, is that if you meet one veteran, you've met one veteran, mm -hmm. and, and their experiences are really varied. And so uh, some will, will have uh, very little uh, in a way of transitional problems. Uh, some will need more support and help. Uh, also, some will come to us disabled and uh, need that kind of support as well. Uh, at, at Long Beach City College, we have a uh, Veterans Resources Center. Uh, it's in the uh, lower level of the E building. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an academic counselor, an MSW intern, uh, a psychologist that comes to us from U.S. Vets. Uh, we've uh, created some very strong liaisons with uh, DSPS and the and the GO Project. So we feel that we have uh, the the means, the, the resources in place to help a veteran who's having uh, problems readjusting to the uh, to civilian life. And yet at the same time, you know, they um, uh, uh, oftentimes veterans feel that there's some kind of stigma attached uh, to coming and seeking out help. And so we try and support them and, and, and you know, make those things available, but yet, you know, uh, give them the uh, freedom uh, to uh, uh, to take care of themselves as well. Yeah. Um, for financial aid, are there any upcoming deadlines that students should know about? Well, we've passed a couple of deadlines already this year. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we start uh, processing applications January 1st, uh, and I should say the Department of Ed starts accepting applications starting with January 1st. Uh, we will be downloading our applications very shortly, within the next week or so, and getting letters out to our students. If a student has not applied for financial aid for next fall, now is the time to do it. Uh, do it as quickly as you can. Mm -hmm. um, now can you tell me with the economy in such a poor place how will that mm -hmm. affect our future in terms of budget cuts and stuff like that? Uh, there, right now, as far as financial aid is concerned, uh, we are still able to get the money we need to give to our students. There is some talk on the federal level of reducing the amount of Pell Grant uh, per student mm -hmm. uh, for uh, the 11-12 school year, uh, but we haven't seen anything actually passed yet. Also, uh, financial aid has been growing tremendously. Uh, we gave out about 8,000 Pell Grants two years ago and about 12,000 last year. We gave out about 41 million uh, two years ago wow. and about 61 million last year. So as, as long as students continue to apply, it appears we don't see anything on the horizon except for this Pell Grant uh, issue at the federal level uh, that would uh, change financial aid uh, the way we're doing it. But because of the numbers, it's more important than ever for students to apply for financial aid early. Yeah, and lastly, is there anything that you want students to know? Uh, apply for financial aid as soon as you can. Um, you know, that, uh, that's about it. And if you're not too sure if you're eligible, then fill out an application anyway and let us decide if you're eligible or not. Thank you for being here, Dr. McCallum. I'm Varial Khan for IE News. Thanks, Varial. That was very informative. Let's join DJ Khan in the Kelby studio for the top 10 pop songs of the week. Hi, I'm DJ Khan from the KLBC studio. Today I have your top 10 pop songs of the week. Starting with number 10, we have Rocketeer by Far East Movement featuring Ryan Tedder. Number 9, More by Usher. Number 8, Firework by Katy Perry. Number 7, Hey Baby, Drop It to the Floor by Pitbull featuring T-Pain. Number six, Hold It Against Me by Britney Spears. Number five, Forget You by CeeLo Green. Number four, Born This Way by Lady Gaga. And number three, Grenade by Bruno Mars. Number two, Perfect by Pink. And finally, number one, Tonight I'm Loving You by Enrique Iglesias featuring Ruda Chris and DJ Frankie. If you are interested in Japanese pop music, you can tune into my show every Wednesday at 7 to 8 p.m. on klbc.org, broadcasting 16 to 8 a.m. Or you can watch us live on ustream.tv under klbclb. You can also check our sister station, KCTY, on kctyfm.org, 
Broadcasting 107.7 FM or KCTYLV on Ustream.tv. I also want to talk about something very important to me. I think everyone knows what happened in Japan, so please support and pray for them. I'm DJ Kana, thank you for watching. Thanks, Kana. Let's go to Laura Moran, who got the inside scoop on the men's volleyball team. Welcome to this edition of Spotlight, and do I have a treat for you. Sitting with me is the new interim athletic director and men's volleyball head coach, Randy Tutorp. Alongside is sophomore outside hitter, Parker Del Rey. Thank you so much for joining me today, oh, gentlemen. Thank you for having us here. First and foremost, coach, congratulations on the new interim position. Thank you, thank you very much. And for those who don't know, uh, Mr. Tutorp, or Coach Tutorp, has been a part of the Vikings program since fall of 2003, where he took and revitalized the program, taking them from a 2-14 and 14 season to a 15-3 and three season. And since then, it's just been success after success, taking home three state titles. Talk about the keys to your success and what that means for the new program and the Vikings uh, sports programs in general. Uh, you know, I, I generally feel that you have to work hard uh, to accomplish your, your goals. You have to set goals. Uh, I date myself back a little further than you do because I was a student athlete here so, uh, and I played volleyball for the program and then uh, prior to head coaching was an assistant coach. So, uh, you know, there's just a, a great deal of buy-in to being a Viking and, um, you know, I'm just very motivated to try to do the best we can here at the school. So that helps, but uh, definitely I think if you ask all of our guys, we, we generally work really hard. Uh, our off-season training, uh, is unmatched I would say. Uh, a lot of the guys that have played in our program and then go on to uh, university level uh, kind of come back and say coach uh, it was easier there than it was in our program with our training so um, you know that's the root of it we find great great players and, and great athletes uh, student athletes like Parker and um, and then we just work really hard and, and uh, we know we know what goals we, we want to go after so uh, it's not a real hidden secret. Great athletes, hard work usually equals success. Well, success, yeah, six conference titles in seven seasons. And uh, for the past two, past two seasons, you've been 10 and 0. I know it's hard work and dedication, but there has to be something else. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I hope it uh, transfers to them, but each game is, is the, the most important game. You know, we don't, we try real hard not to get caught up in, uh, in looking too far ahead or, or, or even behind us. So the season before, uh, awesome, you know, undefeated conference championship, that's great, but that does nothing for us right now. It's all about what we are gonna do now. So we have to work hard still. We have to get in and improve uh, weekly. You know, we really look at our strengths, our weaknesses and, and try to improve. And we take it one match at a time. And, and uh, you know, that, that's, that's been the key really. Now, Parker, this is your second season with the Vikings program, and last year you guys were very, very close to getting another state title, but you fell short against Orange Coast College. Tell me what you've learned from last season that you are putting into this season to get back to the state title. Uh, well, it was just a huge learning experience, and it brings back fire to just come back this year and make you work that much harder and, and uh, try and get back on top. And uh, I think we have a good, really good shot this year. So I'm excited to play with these guys. Now a little bit of your background. You're from Arizona. What brought you out here to uh, sunny California, Long Beach especially? Well, uh, besides the uh, pretty girls and the ocean, <laughs> it's the um, volleyball, definitely. You can't get this kind of volleyball anywhere else. You got the beach volleyball, which definitely helps with training. and as well as uh, the competition anywhere you go, you're gonna find good competition in volleyball out here. Now, Coach Tutorp, you went from being a player, which you talked about, from, to being a coach. Now talk about that transition. Well, uh, it's not, it wasn't overnight. You know, I, uh, there were other coaching experiences. So, you know, when I, when I finished playing at San Diego State, uh, I immediately got into coaching. I knew I wanted to coach. Uh, I love the sport, love education. And um, so that's where it started. You know, I started in high school and whatnot, and uh, 
but I knew that I wanted to be at a higher level and I had just had such a great um, feeling about Long Beach City College, you know, having gone through the, the community college process myself and, and how it helps so many students and student athletes that I knew I wanted to come back. And so uh, the opportunities lined up and, and were there for me and, uh, you know, I, I just, I've never looked back and I, and I love it. So, you know, the transition from, from player to coach was real easy. You know, I, uh, I think I was kind of the player who was a coach while he was playing anyway. So uh, I think it was natural for me. Now some, some more of your accolades, you've been named Coach of the Year three times by the Community College System. How do you recruit? Do you use your status? You know, uh, it's funny because a lot of, we get, you know, some negativity, I would say. When you're successful, a lot, everybody's kind of looking at you or, or after you. And uh, the only thing I can really say is success makes recruiting very easy. Uh, and, and just like anything, it's networking. I've coached long enough now that I know a lot of coaches uh, throughout all over the place. Arizona Parker, actually, uh, his high school coach, her son, played in our program. And, uh, and she called me up and said, hey, you know, there's this kid I think, I think you, you know, would be interested in. And Parker came out to California and, and uh, contacted us. And, you know, it was, it was pretty easy. But that, that's really uh, how it goes, you know. Um, work really hard to try to help the kids you know, while they're here and go on to four-year universities and you do that long enough and and people you know they, they trust that that's what's going to be happening and coaches want the best for their athletes always and so it's really been that that network cycle of uh, coaches looking to place their players and and um, and Parker's right Cal we're, we're lucky here in Southern California this is the hotbed of men's volleyball uh, and so a lot of athletes want to come here and so it makes it easy uh, to get quality very quality student athletes now parker how does it feel to be coached by someone who has been so successful what does that mean to you it's great uh i haven't always had that so it's definitely uh, been a good experience and uh, it shows we win games and we work hard and that's the uh, product of it. Our, our working hard is our success. And what have you learned that you will take to, you, uh, to use in the next step or the next phase of your volleyball career? Um, everything, more than just volleyball, even just, I mean, working hard and being determined to, to find what I want in, in, uh, and achieve, what, achieve my goals in volleyball and in life, so. And uh, what are the prospects looking like for you after you leave Long Beach City College? Uh, I've talked to a few schools, um, some NAIA, some NCAA, but uh, you know I'm keeping my options open right now and uh, definitely just want to see how the season goes. Not going to put too much on my back right now, just play here at Long Beach City. Well, speaking of the season, you started off losing about four games, but now you're on a roll. Can you talk about that and uh, who you look forward to playing? Sure, sure, sure. I have to correct you, though. We, we lost two matches. Okay. <laughs> well, thank uh, you for correcting no me. No problem. We actually opened up with, uh, going undefeated in the first tournament, which in, in the road to do that, we beat some big powerhouses. Uh, and then we stumbled a little bit, which was... I think good for us. It's uh, it's really made us focus on on our weaknesses, um, and that's just it. You know, we don't we haven't gotten caught up in it. And uh, I think the team, you know, led by guys like Parker who are, who have been there, they know what they want. Uh, we're not beating ourselves up too much. You know, we're just really looking at how we can improve and uh, how we can win the next match and put ourselves in the right uh, position for playoffs. Because clearly. Uh, that's the goal. There's no hidden secret. The guys know what we want to do. We want to win a state championship this year. And, uh, and so we're committed to it. And uh, each week is a new opportunity to, to get back on and, and, and get us closer to that. So, uh, you know, the new guys are going to learn real quick that coming up, L.A. Pierce is going to be the one we're looking forward to. That's a heated rivalry that's spanned. I saw, I ran into alumni at our last game who played in the 70s and 80s. And they said, how's the Pierce alumni? Or, uh, uh, you know, match up. And I said, oh, it's still very heated. So that's the one we will look forward to. Well, thank you so much. This is great talking to you both. Now, if you, um, people could go on the website and click volleyball and check the schedule. So Absolutely. I think that's something to do. And again, thank you. This is Laura Marine for IE News. Thanks, Laura. 
Now let's join Chris Johnson and Ferio Khan who sat down with Professor Stephanie Powell and six of her most advanced dance students. Hi, we're sitting here with Professor Stephanie Powell and her students from the LBCC um, dance program here at Long Beach City. Um, now let me first start out, where were you, I know this, you guys are a prestigious bunch, where were you guys accepted to? Let's get a couple people. Uh, the Lux Boreal Modern Contemporary Company in Mexico. Um, the Alvin Ailey Summer Dance Intensive in New York. I've got accepted to Dance Theater of Harlem in New York. Um, I was accepted to the Pacific Northwest West Ballet School Summer Intensive in Seattle, Washington. Alvin Ailey Dance Summer Intensive in New York City. I was accepted in Alonzo King Lines Ballet for five weeks in San Francisco Summer Dance Program. Now, how has the LBCC dance program prepared you for your future? Anybody? Anyone? 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 City College Dance Program, we offer several classes that prepare dancers if they're interested in pursuing an actual career in the field of dance. We begin with the fundamentals of, of ballet and uh, beginning modern dance. These dancers in particular have progressed beyond those fundamental levels and are now considered intermediate dancers, which is the highest level of dance that we offer here at Long Beach City College. The classes that I teach here um, have a live accompanist and are rigorous. Um, I expect them to have flexible bodies, um, intense levels of balance and extreme ability and agility. Um, similar to your football player or your, your prestigious athlete, being accepted into the companies and the summer intensive programs that they were accepted into is remarkable. Coming from a community college which is usually focused around sometimes recreational dancers or dancers that just enjoy moving, they've taken it to the next level. They've really brought the, brought up the bar and raised the bar for Long Beach City College and now we're recognized all across the United States, which makes us really, really special. So everybody here, is this is the best of the best, pretty much. Of right? those who in decided this, uh, to audition, some people are really talented, yeah. but they don't want to go in the direction of pursuing a career. Okay. These are some of the best of the best that really want to go that in yeah. that direction. Right, and I hear that you guys, uh, from dance, from the dance that I know, that do you guys have to um, start at an early age, or do you guys have to like train? Do you just start training? Not when? always. I didn't start until I was 18. Oh, so wow. I've only been dancing for seven years. <laughs> so you're natural. Uh, I <laughs> yeah. yeah, he is, actually. <laughs> Some dancers are just gifted. They have more rotation in their pelvis. They have more balance. They have nice feet. They have um, a body that is long and lengthened and strong. So if they start later, they're expected to, to keep up with dancers that have been dancing since they were three. Yeah. So it's a very unique group. There's another dancer that started late as well. Yeah, I started at 16 at Long Beach Jordan and it was very hard and I came here in 2008 and I was 18 and I, my first ballet class was with Stephanie Powell and it was very hard but like I kept, I kept taking class, kept taking other classes with Sheree King and I finally auditioned, I finally got into something so very excited. Well, that's really exciting. Yeah. Some of our dancers have been dancing since they were the age of three. Maybe they can tell you about their experience. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I started dancing classical ballet when I was three years old and I think that having the fundamentals when you're young can really help you achieve more progress when you're older because you get it into your body from then on so you don't have to learn it so late and you can just improve your technique from there. Well, I started dancing when I was three years old and I started off in competition and after that my mom put me into classical ballet and I fell in love with it and then after that um, I got accepted into um, Los Angeles County High School Performing Arts and from going there it really opened up my eyes to different styles of dance like contemporary, modern, horse and stuff like that and then after that I came to LBCC and I met Stephanie Powell which really brought in my aspect on life of dancing which I really appreciate so yeah. I have been dancing since I was five and I have danced at multiple studios and I really didn't fall in love with dance until I came here. When I took intermediate ballet is when I actually found my passion through Stephanie Powell, through just the way she teaches and the style was just different from the studio dances that I have personally done. And so it made me more passionate about dance when I came here and made me want to pursue my career. And I tried out for the program. Um, for Ailey actually before 
I came to here and I didn't make it and I trained for two years and tried again and I made it. I started out when I was 10 and I was doing as much as I possibly could. Like I was doing modern, jazz, ballet and then when I was 14 in high school I started intensively training in ballet and so I feel I was able to like get my feet wet in like different styles until I picked the one that I wanted. And then as I came here, I feel that Stephanie has so much more to offer um, in my ballet training. And she has different cues and different technique styles to improve me and make me as versatile as possible. Mm -hmm. What kind of classes are offered at LBCC? Is it just ballet or is it more? Oh, no. No, oh, no, no. We have a broad spectrum of dance genres that we offer. We obviously start with the fundamentals of ballet. We encourage everyone to start with the fundamentals of ballet because it is the foundation of dance technique. Um, it really gives dancers a, a great base as far as vocabulary is concerned. They all speak French and the entire class is taught in French. We go slow in the beginning because most people don't just walking around saying plie and arabesque and pirouette. So they learn all about that. I also teach the, the anatomy. I think it's important for them to know how their bodies are working, what their bones are doing so they don't get injured. Um, we also offer beginning jazz, we offer African dance, we offer beginning modern, we offer um, social dance, um, belly dance, uh, we have a performance class, we have a choreography class. The performance class is actually a very unique class. Uh, many of them are participating in it. We have a performance that comes up, that's coming up in April that we're preparing for and that's a class that meets um, almost every day of the week except for Sunday and the dancers rehearse for three hours at a time for each dance that they're preparing. So some of them may be in one dance, which means three hours a week. Some are in four dances, which means up to 12 hours a week. So they're very committed. They're very dedicated. They work hard. And that's completely separate from their training. Now, for all of these classes, are there uh, like recitals? Like, is that what you would call it, a recital that uh, happens? We call it actually a dance concert. Okay. The, the work that we're, we're working on is more geared towards what we call the concert stage, okay. uh, which is what we have at the LA, at Long Beach City College, at the LAC campus, is the, uh, the auditorium. Okay. Um, I think maybe in studios and smaller schools they may have a recital, but once you get in college and yeah. you're actually in the university setting or uh, geared towards a professional setting, it's a dance concert. We have a performance that's coming up in April 15th, 16th, and 17th. April 15th is an 8 p.m. show, the uh, 16th is an 8 p.m. show as well, and then the 17th is a 2 p.m. matinee on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Where can people buy tickets for that? Tickets can be purchased from students or they can actually go up to the ticket box office on the day the performance. I just re recommend that people attend a little bit early if you're going to wait until the last minute. Parking is always an issue and you want to get a good seat. So arrive maybe around 7.30 for an evening performance. Well, I want to thank all of you guys for being here. Thank, thank you for having us. Oh, no problem. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. If you guys want to buy tickets, you can see any of the students here or you can go to the ticket booth on the day of the show. I'm Fariel Khan. And I'm Chris Johnson for IE News. Thanks so much, guys. I can't wait for their performance. Also, don't forget to attend the Mini Grand Prix here on the LAC campus at Veterans Memorial Stadium. You can also tune us a coverage of the Mini Grand Prix coming soon on this channel in a couple of weeks. Well, that's a wrap. We hope you have enjoyed this week's edition of IE News. There are plenty of opportunities here at Lumbee City College. The radio and television department invites you to join our team. If you're interested to become a member of our IE News team here and produce great television, please call 562-938-4892. I'm Tierra Cato. And I'm Brandon Jackson. Thanks for watching.